Hello everybody, welcome back as ever to Quality Time. So, um, big bit of news, I guess. We'll start off with the really, really dire one. The coronavirus. Or the Toyota Corolla virus, or the coronavirus, or just any number of misspellings on Twitter. Currently there are, depending on who you ask, a couple of hundred cases in the UK. The vast majority of them are centered in the south towards London. There are about 20-ish inside of the Northeast region in general, and so far none of them are in Middlesbrough or Darlington or County Durham in, at large, so uh, there's, there's not really a huge panic right now. That said, there is already a definite pull on resources from various supermarkets around the area, so it's a little hard to find a, find a few uh, medical aids and such. Paracetamol is basically gone for some reason. We don't have a current reason to actually worry here. That said, I am increasingly contemplating just, like, buying a couple of, uh, some, like, face masks off of Amazon and then just tricking them out to look like Plague Doctor Beaks. They'd be about as helpful in actually avoiding this particular virus, but they'd look pretty nice, and if we're gonna all die to a plague, we might as well look the part, I feel, so... If I end up opening an Etsy for that, then I'll let you guys know. The death rate globally for this virus is at most under 4%, and that is, of course, disproportionately shunted to the more immunocompromised sections of the population, that is to say, very young children, that is to say, terminally ill patients, or chronically ill patients, as well as the elderly. Funny that that also happens to be the most, the, the vast chunk of people that are kind of disrupting our society on a global level right now. Actually avoiding the infection is very simple. Uh, it, it is mostly spread by fluid contact, so we're talking things like sneezing, that kind of thing. Uh, we're talking things like, uh, like shaking hands, that kind of thing. Um, so consequently, it is largely identical in that regard to just the flu. Avoid the sneezes, wash your hands, there's a whole ton going around right now on how long and how to wash your hands, because apparently society just never gave us a clear metaphor on this one. But if you do that, you should be fine. I've genuinely seen reports that suggest that the actual infectious range of a given individual is a... It, it's south of two meters. So, you should be fine unless you act, unless you behave like an idiot. There is no need for panic right now. That said, it's going to be interesting to see how this progresses further, and whilst I would probably, if I got it, survive quite handily, because my immune system is pretty robust for some reason, I'm not as certain about fuzz, so I, I will be taking precautions, but measured response, please. Don't don't drain resources from people who might need those resources even more than you already. So, just bear that in mind. Other than that, uh, the response from the last video on whether or not I should upload stream bots seems to be very heavily in favor of uploading them, uh, but the exact implementation on how to do so is a little bit more vague. Because if I open up a second channel, called say, remember, archive or something, and upload all the VODs there, then I have a second channel that I need to promote, and any traffic for the VODs is going to go to that channel and not the main channel. There might be some, like, shift here and there, that's fine. Um, whereas if I upload all of the VODs onto the main channel, then that's a whole ton of content, which is its own positive, except that there's a long-standing like understanding that uh, the advert the average YouTube like viewer has an attention span south of like 10 minutes so hours long content especially like three hours long content people don't have the attention span or just the schedule time to watch all of those so those are probably get very little views in general the theoretical optimum that I can think of would be to upload them to the main channel unlisted and keep them in playlists, but then people can't subscribe to those playlists. So there's definite pros and cons with all of these options that I need to weigh before I actually do that. That said, I do still have the VODs. They are still being generated, and that does include the most recent first saga of uh, Vampire, where... Boy, we're gonna be having fun with that hospital. I'm gonna be looking after so many people. I'm gonna be. It seemed remarkably apt that uh, coronavirus would hit right as I start a video game that's set during a significant pandemic. Hmm, didn't intend that, but I guess it works. Anyway, it's enough about disease and illness, more or less. Onto the, onto the uh, schedule, shall we? Our upcoming streams for the week. 
On Wednesday at 7pm GMT, we have more Dungeons & Dragons hats with the second campaign, and will the Team Robot misinterpret the future again? Then on Thursday at 9pm GMT, we have more Midnight with Monster Hunter World, where, yes, we're still working on Vilcana. And on Friday at 9, we have more Fright Day Night with some more Vampire. And on Saturday at 7, we have more Dungeons & Dragons hats main campaign, and what further horrors await inside the dungeon? Followed, of course, at 9 with the carousel, playing some random games. And lastly for the streams for the week, at 9 on Tuesday we have more building blocks as the changelings get to know their hives better. And videos you might have missed for the week, we have an episode of Dailies by Daylight where, for once, the entity is kind. Almost a little too kind, actually. And an episode of New Millennia where Lying fixes up the rover with some convenient modifications, and finally lays his hands on the shiny blue rock he's been dreaming of. And as ever, onto the questions. So as always, there's a drawn from the comments section of the preceding vlog. If you happen to have anything to ask, drop it down below, and we'll see if it gets answered next week. Our question of the week comes from Blood Monastery. What do you think of classic versus modern vampires? Now, the most classic kind of example that we have of the vampire that we understand as it to be in modern literature, of course, is Dracula, uh, Bram Stoker way back when, wrote, wrote Dracula, and it is full of so many bizarre things that have just completely, like, dipped off of the radar of vampirism. Um, but it also heavily inspired the gothic kind of genre in general. Uh, you have, like, people doing these vague motions and whatnot and speaking in strange accents, and just all sorts of, like, that. And then you get to a bit more of the Anne Rice era, where vampires become a lot more brooding and a lot more tragically cursed with immortality and whatnot. Um, and then you get to the really more modern with Twilight, um, where vampires are still kind of brooding, but also getting back a lot more to the sexiness of their earlier incarnations. Making no judgments on Stephanie Mayer. Um, and. Uh, I, I feel like a balanced take has to be taken here. Like, okay, here's all of the properties of being a vampire. How does a person of this era, like, in, uh, in, interpret and encapsulate all of these things? So, okay, you can't eat garlic or go near it. You can't go near to a crucifix. That's fine. Or in some cases, handle silver. Uh, you can't, uh, like, see the sunrise. We have people like that in our in our societies already. There are people with allergies to silver. There are people who work in night shifts, just sort of generally, because that's the best work they can find. The like major thing that I'm not aware of anyone having. Well, there are subcultures. I'm not aware of anybody having like a medical need to suck blood from victims or such. Uh, but there are certainly ways around that in the modern era. It is entirely possible to be a vampire in the modern world in a perfectly normal life for the moment. So. Shifting like the whole chunk of vampirism and the like even most original kind of early days Bram Stoker kind of elements through time gives you a whole bunch of possibilities and different kind of interpretations, but people tend to go with very specific uh, How do I put this archetypes? So you've got the Dracula who is really important and generally only one of like a handful of characters that are vampires in the story and they're like really powerful and have a whole slew of bizarre and vague like abilities and also behavioral quirks and whatnot. Um, very rarely do they seem to have like an actual well thought out plan for what they're doing or motive for why they're doing it, they're just sort of like doing it. Um, then you have the Anne Rice ones who are more dealing with immortality as opposed to vampirism. Vampirism just applies its like aesthetics to it and for the most part it's like, well I'm eternal, um, boy does that suck, oh no. Uh, and then you get to Twilight where it's like, I'm cursed but also really attractive and I'm also brooding but you know you're pretty awesome that it's just hit treat treat vampirism essentially like a chronic illness <laughs> that's basically what it is <laughs> and like we have people dealing with chronic illness a lot like it's not hard to find uh relations here it's like uh, there's a dc character called cyborg 
and he was created a while ago, when Prosthesis was much earlier in development and not exactly passing in the slightest bit. And he's his whole like early backstory was just like he was created, he was turned into a cyborg against his will, like because it was like to save his life in like a dire emergency of the snap judgment, that kind of thing. And he hated that. He absolutely despised his dad for doing that, and he looked terrible and didn't have any chance of passing in modern society. And then just more and more he's gotten to be just, like, really freaking awesome. So it's like, I, I, I feel like you're a lot more traumatized than you possibly should be, considering that you are, like, literally the, the, a cover boy for a Marvel movie at this point. It's like, hmm. It's just, yeah, you, you, need to t you need to settle on what vampirism means, and then f figure out how people actually like, relate to that in the modern world, because there's plenty of people who have a lot of these factors that are just fine. Hey, that was a lot more fur a rant than I was expecting to come out of that question, but I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> ah, and with that, that's about all I have for you this week, so, again, hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you all as ever next time. This video brought to you by my wonderful patrons at patreon.com slash lying.